Hello, my name is Kristen Selgis. I'm the Community Preservation Act Manager for the City of Somerville. I'm going to be talking a little bit about what the Community Preservation Act is and what the Community Preservation Committee does so people um, who are interested in applying to be on the Community Preservation Committee can um, have some background information about that. Um, and there's more information about how to apply on the website. So the Community Preservation Act is a Massachusetts state law. It's communities adopt it through a ballot initiative. It's now been adopted by 172 communities in the state of Massachusetts. And communities that adopt the act create a new funding source in their communities by putting a surcharge on property tax. In Somerville, that surcharge is 1.5%. That money goes into a fund that's managed by a nine resident committee, and it can fund four things, open space, affordable housing, historic preservation, and outdoor recreation. The enabling legislation is very specific about what can and cannot be funded with Community Preservation Act funding. So this chart that you're seeing indicates what we um, can use our CPA funding for. Community housing, we can buy new housing, we can use it to create new housing, and we can also do work to um, rehabilitate existing housing, but only if that housing was acquired or created with CPA funding. We haven't done that yet since we only adopted CPA in 2012. All of our properties um, are brand new. All the affordable housing units that have been created with CPA funding are brand new. In this category, it's unique because we can do some supporting activities. So this includes funding for affordable housing trusts. The Somerville Affordable Housing Trust Fund is the housing arm of the Community Preservation Committee and runs the application process for all affordable housing projects. And we can also use that money to do um, supportive programs like rental assistance. In a historic preservation, we can acquire historic resources. Of course, we can't create historic resources. They become historic from their own merit, um, but we can also preserve and rehabilitate historic resources. Open space and outdoor recreation are treated as one um, category for funding. The definition of open space is really like wild lands, conservation lands, wetlands. We don't have a lot of that in Somerville, but we do have some really nice high quality play spaces that are becoming, we're getting even more high quality spaces in part through CPA funding. So we can acquire land with CPA funding, we can create new um, parks and playgrounds and outdoor spaces. And we can do work to preserve um, and rehabilitate what we have. Um, one thing that's important to notice is that we cannot use CPA funds to pay for maintenance or replace current spending um, for the government. Um, you know, so if there's an existing program um, or like city staff time to do a rehabilitation project for a park. We can't use CPA funding to support that. We cannot use CPA funds for programming either. So um, historic docent programs, um, educational programs, or like outdoor youth sports activities cannot be funded with Community Preservation Act funds. So this is, tells you how we've spent our Community Preservation Act funds to date. The first year of um, grant making was in fiscal year 15. We're in the review process for fiscal year 19 right now. The community preservations are going to start on October 11th. Um, and so we have spent so far 47% of our funding not considering bonding on affordable housing, 30% on open space and recreational land, and 23% on historic resources. One of the most important jobs of the Community Preservation Committee is to set minimum funding targets each year for um, the funding categories. That's done through the Community Preservation Plan and they seek input on that through a public hearing with the community. Until this year, the minimum allocations were 45% affordable housing and 15% each for open space and historic resources. 20% of those funds were flexible because the amounts requested in each category changes from year to year. So having some funds that aren't pre-designated for any one category gives the committee some flexibility to fund good projects that um, happen to be applying in a year where there's a lot of demand in one area or another. And the final 5% goes to support the administration of the program. Um, this year for fiscal year 19 is the first year they changed that allocation and so the minimum allocation this year is 50% for affordable housing, 20% for open space recreation land, 15% for historic resources, and then 10% flexible. 
So what that has translated into so far in terms of projects is that we've spent $12 million on affordable housing projects. That includes $6 million bond for the 100 Homes Project um, to fund a total of 19 different projects. In historic preservation, there's been 17 projects for a total of $5.5 million. That includes a $2.5 million bond for the West Branch Library Project. And um, just under $4 million for open space and recreation um, for 25 projects. So in total, we've spent, um, have awarded $21.5 million for 61 projects. And more and more of these are starting to be completed, so we're really starting to see the impact that Community Preservation Act can have in Somerville. The people that all make this happen are our CPC members. Michael Fager from the Conservation Commission is the chair, and Uma Murrigan, the vice chair, is a general public member. And there are nine members, five of whom are ex officio, so we always have someone designated from Conservation Commission, Historic Preservation Commission, the Planning Board, Parks and Open Space Department, and the Housing Authority. And then there are four general public seats. Um, so we have one general public seat open now, and that's what we're um, going to be talking about tonight while we're talking to people tonight. CPC members have three-year terms, and there are term limits. So you can have up to two three-year terms. Um, so at the end, if you are appointed, um, you have the option to say that you would like to be reappointed for a second term, and if that's um, supported by the mayor and the board of aldermen, then you would get a second term. As a staff person, I support um, the community members that are on the Community Preservation Committee. I also support the review committee that is interviewing people um, for this process, and we'll be making a recommendation to the mayor. And my contact information is at the bottom of the slide. In addition to setting the minimum funding allocations for CPA funding, one of the other important things that the Community Preservation Committee does is manage an annual application process. So this is a timeline so you can get a sense of when you would be called upon. Um, there are monthly meetings, but where you might be more or less active um, throughout the year. So in April, we release our community preservation plan. So leading up to that is a community process to seek input to what that should be, and we release the application materials. In May, we um, accept pre-applications. So pre-applications come from community members that have an idea for a project on city land. What this allows us to do is do some matchmaking so that community organizations have a, a partner in the city to implement their project since there's a lot of laws and regulations and restrictions that come along with working on public land. And so um, we also want to make sure that what community members are proposing are in line with the overall goals of the city and in line with neighborhood plans, summer vision, and other things. So community members with an idea submit this pre-application that is brought to the relevant department and they review it and decide whether or not they're going to sign on. This happens early enough that they can develop their project together as partners for the full submission. So the first deadline that everyone has to meet is in July. That's when you submit eligibility determination forms. Um, and this is the process for the historic and open space and recreational land funding, because as I mentioned earlier, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund serves as the housing arm of the CPC, and they manage a separate process for applying for CPA um, housing funds. Because the enabling legislation is very specific about what we can and can't fund, this first phase allows the committee to establish with the applicant whether or not it's worth for them to invest the time to do a full application because, yes, they indeed are eligible. There's no determination at this point whether or not that project is going to get funded. If, if it's a good idea, this is just right now, is this something that could be funded by CPA because it is eligible to do so? Then people submit their full applications in September. And this is where the committee really digs in and tries to figure out which projects are worth funding and at what levels based on the requests and the amount of funding that's available this year or in any year. We have about two million each year overall. And so the way that we divide it, that means there's about 1.2 million each year for the open space and recreation land projects. There's a robust process that they go through. So in October, there's community meetings where all of the applicants have to present their projects to the CPC and the community. 
the CPC asks questions of the applicants in those meetings, and then the community can provide their feedback. We also solicit written comments on the applications each year. And then the CPC meets in November and December to decide which projects they would like to seek funding. The Community Preservation Committee makes recommendations to the Board of Aldermen. The Board of Aldermen are the final approval over all um, Community Preservation Act funding awards. And so then um, in January, we would go through that process or start that process with the Board of Aldermen and after that um, issue grant agreements and be able to start releasing funding. These are the types of projects that come across the Community Preservation Committee's desks and that have received funding. So in affordable housing, the 100 Homes Project, which is a program of the Somerville Community Corporation, which is buying units that are currently on the speculative market and turning them into perpetually deed-restricted affordable housing units. There's also the Better Homes Rental Assistance Program. The federal programs from the um, Housing and Urban Development Department don't provide enough funding to meet what is our real rents are here in Somerville. And so CPA is helping programs make up the difference so that people can afford to stay here in Somerville. Between, so they make up the difference between what the federal government provides and what the actual rents are. In the open space and recreation category, CPA funds have gone to repave the community path and are, have been received to do a design for the community path. They're about to issue a contract for that design firm and so pretty soon you'll start to hear about community meetings related to that. And then the Community Growing Center has received multiple grants and Community Preservation Act funding to do design work to figure out how to best use the space and meet their goals. And starting this fall through CPA, they're going to be implementing those designs and so they're going into construction. And Historic Resources, the Somerville Museum has received multiple grants to um, make their building accessible for all people and to preserve their collections and make their collections safe, I'm improving security and improving the fire safety systems. And it's not just buildings that CPA can support. The Somerville Archives has received funding to do mold remediation on some of their materials and make them accessible, both by putting them online and putting them online in a format that anyone would be able to access. One of the priorities of the Community Preservation Committee is to fund blended projects. And so these are projects that cover more than one CPA category. An example of that is the Mystic Waterworks. So this is a picture of the inside and this is the former pump station on Route 16 which has now been converted into 25 units of affordable housing for seniors and persons with disabilities. And also the Prospect Hill Park and Tower. CPA funds were used to stabilize the tower so people can now enjoy the view from the top again. Paid for a design for the park space and um, is now supporting the construction, the implementation of those designs, which will also start this fall. So there's a fairly wide range of projects that can be funded, and these projects are taking place in all seven wards of Somerville. So that's a little bit about the Community Preservation Act program itself. We are accepting applications for the open general public seat. As I mentioned, the applications are due on October 12th. Um, the forms are online, and then the process for selecting the general public member is there is a review committee that has representatives from each of the categories where CPA can fund, from the city and from the community. Um, and there's a representative from the City of Somerville Personnel Office and a representative from the Community Preservation Committee. So those um, eight people review the applications, they select the finalists. Finalists are brought in for an interview based on the interview process, that committee will make a recommendation to the mayor. Um, the mayor will select um, who to appoint, and then the person needs to go through a confirmation of process with the Board of Aldermen. Once the person is confirmed by the Board of Aldermen, they will be able to be sworn in by the city clerk and serve as full members of the Community Preservation Committee. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, um, please contact me through um, my email, kstelgis at somervillema.gov. Thank you so much.